Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, I figure for my first gun review, I better start with the gun that got me hooked on my favorite manufacturer, which is Sig Sauer. Um, this first review is really the first Sig I ever owned, and a little backstory. Um, I got out of the military in 2010 and kind of, you know, worked for my dad and the family business for a little while before deciding that I wanted to get into law enforcement. And that seemed to be uh, kind of my career choice at the time. Like I was like, this is what I want to do. So I, um, at the time, the only pistol I really owned, um, I'd shot several different types of pistols, but the only one I've really ever owned at the time was a Glock model 22. I believe it was a gen two. Um, or possibly a Gen 3, but it was a Model 22 in 40 cal, and I was not a big fan of 40 cal after getting exposed to more firearms, especially being in the military, where, where in the Army I was using uh, the Beretta M9 9mm, and I really liked the 9mm for recoil and accuracy and all of that, and kind of quickly learned that, yeah, there is a difference. You know, everybody says 40 is a good middle ground between the nine mil and the 45 everybody you know a lot of people who are uh kind of loyal to a certain caliber will say oh the 45 it's the stopping power i carry a 45 because they don't make a 46 and that kind of thing i saw that as like you know all right what are you compensating for i've shot 45s i've shot 40s i've shot nine mils um i've shot 357 uh 50 ae uh 38 380 you know, all the way down to 22. And I was really, you know, kind of used to the 40 because I was kind of under that impression that the 40 would be a good kind of middle ground. Well, I quickly learned, and this is why I pretty much will never own a 40 ever again. It's got a snappy recoil. And then also, um, as I learned later on, and I'll, I'll get to more of this later in videos where um, I get into NFA items and stuff, the suppressibility of a 40 is very difficult and it's not great. So, um, got out and working for, for my dad and decided to go into law enforcement. And I was like, you know what? I really don't want to carry a Glock. I know Glocks are huge in the law enforcement realm. Um, I know I, I've lost count how many people I've worked with, encountered, um, cops I've met along, along my career and, kind of learned that, you know, Glocks are pretty popular, but I was kind of more, um, I had shot a friend's dad's SIG and was like, you know, I kind of want to, kind of want a SIG. So what I ended up doing was I went and, um, went to a local gun store that I had been to before. They had an indoor range and I, and it was kind of a newer gun store, met the owner. He was a former Navy SEAL really cool guy. Um, he ended up giving me an incredible deal. Uh, I bought a SIG P229 and that is the pistol right here. Um, this was my first SIG. It's a P229. I bought it in a, um, kind of a kit that they had that was, um, kind of like a tactical kind of kit. It came with a light laser combo, which was made by SIG. Honestly, not not the greatest thing, um, and in terms of weapon lights, and I, if um, if there's any feedback that people say, you know, do a gear review or whatever, I can do that. Um, I can go over some of the weapon lights that uh, I've experienced over my my career and experienced in my life, and go into that. But the the light that this gun came with was kind of, for lack of a better term, garbage. So it came with the light, it came with three magazines, and it came with this um, paddle style holster that really, I mean, it, it was it, it was junk. It wasn't very usable. Um, I ended up going through the academy, qualifying with this very pistol and uh, getting third. Um, in fact, the funny story about it is I ended up getting third place out of all the shooters. Um, and the top three were all SIG. Um, take that how you will. So anyway, um, I'll get down to it. For one, um, this SIG uh, does not have the stock grip that came with it. I took those grips off because they were that 
um, E3 kind of, um, I guess you'd call it like grip tape type, really rough texture, not very comfortable to shoot. The back strap is a little, um, left a little to be desired. So I've got these Hogue rubberized grips that I put on. Very easy to put on just, you know, the two mounting screws and uh, they're two individual pieces that go right onto the, the weapon. And I like it. Um, I shot hundreds of thousands of rounds. Through, maybe not hundreds of thousands, but hundreds of rounds through this gun. And the grip really does make a difference. Um, to go over the features of the weapon here, um, it's a standard... Uh, double action, single action, SIG, um, made in Exeter, New Hampshire. Hampshire. This is the 9mm Para. Um, it's a well-built, um, very reliable, very accurate gun, um, despite it being a shorter barrel than a lot of full-size, full-length firearms. The one thing I do like about the SIG is it is incredibly versatile. What inspired me to get the 229 was doing research, and I do everything with, um, I mean, I, I, I go into everything, full bore, full commitment. I do the research. I check everything out. And what I loved about the 229 and this um, particular uh, model that SIG released is that this is the same weapon that the Secret Service uses. And I thought that was really cool. I was like, hey, you know, if one of the largest law enforcement agencies in the country trusts this firearm, I guess I could too. Of course, Secret Service uses it in a 357 SIG load, um, whereas this is nine millimeter. I opted not to go with 357 SIG because, well, it's a rare caliber, it's a little more expensive, and to be frankly honest, it wasn't approved by any law enforcement agency I was looking into getting hired by, and it was not allowed in the academy that I went through. They allow the, the big three, you know, nine millimeter, 40, and 45. So um, it's a very simple design, very robust. It has the, um, on this side I can show you that, here's the magazine lock and release. And I learned in the academy from an actual SIG armor that the Sig Sauer is the only manufacturer that this is an actual slide release and stop lever. Um, they actually do. The manufacturer says you can let it slide home. Um, it does when you uh, charge the weapon as so. It locks back into double action mode. And of course, on the other side is the decocker lever. lever which decocks it safely so you're not, you know, doing the um, 1911 kind of put the hammer down, dangerous, make sure it's unloaded before you do that. Um, and what I learned while qualifying is uh, in my um, first agency I worked for, uh, local sheriff's office, everybody said if you're going to be using a double action, single action with a decocker, your first round when you chamber it and holster it, decock. And every iteration thereafter, decock. Um, so that first trigger pull is that double action, long trigger pull. And I will show you the weapon is unloaded. If you can see there, there's no round in the chamber. Decock it. So that first trigger pull is quite long. Um, whereas with the single action mode, it's not as long. That was um, one of the things that I found about this uh, particular pistol to be kind of unique. Um, not many modern uh, law enforcement weapons are that way. Of course, the 1911, as um, anybody will tell you, with a 1911, it will only fire from single action mode. There is um, your modern style 1911 is not a double action pistol. So uh, that being said, it's... Um, it was a big learning curve for me, but I feel like it made me um, pretty good at, you know, that if you anticipate the recoil and that really long trigger pull, your first round is not going to be accurate. Second round follow-on shots are just fine um, in single action because of the shorter trigger pull. Uh, at the time that I purchased this, it has the standard trigger, um, just the factory stock trigger. I have another SIG um, that's very similar to this, the M11A1, which is kind of like the um, P228 updated. And 
it has the short reset trigger. The short reset trigger, if you can find a 229, if that's if that's the weapon you're looking for, I definitely say go with the short reset trigger. I have it on two other SIGs, uh, including the M11 and my two, uh, 226. The short reset trigger is definitely way better, especially for follow on shots. When you um, reset that trigger, it is so much shorter. Um, and I can demonstrate that here. So when you pull the trigger, you've got that long trigger pull and the reset's there. The reset kind of um, makes it a little bit different in terms of um, your follow on shots and it's something that you gotta learn um, as most firearms enthusiasts know. Now the 229 comes with standard with 15 round magazines. The thing I love about the 229, this has a rail. Um, you can mount any type of um, rail mounted accessories to it. It's a very, um, very good, high quality firearm. Unlike Glock, there's no polymer all over this. It's it's all steel, steel frame, steel slide. It's it's everything you could you could want. The um, barrel length does inhibit accuracy. Uh, if I was to do a side by side accuracy comparison between the 229 and my 226, which has about an inch longer barrel. I would be more accurate with the 226, hands down, just because the sight radius is uh, much larger, and that does lend to accuracy. The other thing I like about the 229 is um, when I got out of the military, I got my concealed carry permit. I was carrying a full-size Glock, which is a little bit bigger than this in terms of the grip, and I needed something that was a little better for concealability, and I bought this. And then I found that um, one of the words of advice was, don't carry your duty weapon off-duty. Have an off-duty specific weapon in case something happens, God forbid, and you have to utilize it in a defensive situation. You're not basically, you know, off-duty, I'm out with my family, and um, something goes catastrophically wrong, and I have to utilize my sidearm. If I'm using my duty pistol and I end up having to use it in a shooting situation, that gun is gone. That goes into evidence for, I could lose it for as, as long as a year, two years, sometimes longer, and I didn't want to risk that. So I got the M11 and that was kind of designated as my off-duty carry gun. Um, the only difference between this and the M11, and I'll do a review on the M11 later, um, no rail and the short reset trigger. Other than that, they're pretty much identically the same gun. And the purpose I did that for was to carry a weapon off duty that was similar to my duty weapon so that there was no kind of, you know, learning curve, having to learn a new weapon system. Um, when I had specifically trained for this, it was just modifying my draw from a concealed position rather than from my standard duty equipment. The, also, the great thing is same magazines. Um, the M11 and the 229 both use the same exact magazine and they both are usable interchangeably with each other. So that way I could even use my duty magazines to um, transition over to my off duty weapon. And that's what made it uh, kind of made sealed the deal for me at the time. Um, I've since changed that, but uh, throughout my um, career in law enforcement, I carried three different firearms uh, consistently. I carried the 229 for, I would say, better part of eight months before switching to the 226. And I will do a review on the 226 for you. So you can kind of, I can do the compare and contrast and I can even do a side by side comparison. Um, but the thing that I love is the, um, this 229 will have a special place in my heart as being the first SIG and also being the uh, the SIG that bit me and got me addicted to the brand. Um, I'm not knocking Glocks. I have owned two in my lifetime. Uh, I have an M, I have a, excuse me, I have a uh, Model 17 nine millimeter. It's a blue label that I bought. They make them for uh, the blue labels, basically just the same gun. It's just marketed to law enforcement and at a little more um, competitive price than your standard civilian model. However, that being said, um, I do not hate Glock. I am just a bigger fan of SIG. I think that they are uh, more well-built, 
more versatile and um, I, I trust them a little bit more. I've heard of more catastrophic failures from Glocks than I have from SIGs. That's not saying that SIGs are perfect. Nothing is perfect. Um, things like this that basically, uh, like, a, like a SIG um, or any pistol, you've basically got a controlled explosion happening in this very small space that basically puts wear on a firearm. This particular gun has had a lot of rounds through it. My 226 has had a lot of rounds through it. My 320 has had probably the most rounds through it of any gun that I've ever, uh, any pistol that I've owned. Um, it's just the nature of the beast, the nature of the business, and the nature of just owning firearms. Takedown is incredibly simple with this. So basically, lock the slide to the rear. There's a takedown lever here, and then release the slide, and the whole slide assembly comes off. And you can set that aside. Inside, you can see the uh, guide rod and spring basically just come out like so, and then the barrel comes out. It's very simple, uh, makes cleaning a breeze, and reassembly is just as easy as just putting everything back together like so line it up with the uh, slide rails lock it back relock and it's ready to go so um to kind of conclude that i i love the 229 it's a great gun it's a fantastic platform it's very versatile it's very robust it's a very uh, tough gun it will get you through um, thick and thin. I, this being an older model, um, I've I convinced my father to buy a uh, 229 Legion. Uh, it has serrations on the front of the slide, whereas this only has serrations on the back. That makes um, your press check a little easier, um, so you can kind of get more grip on it. So uh, yeah, I guess that concludes the video. Um, so. Hit the like button and don't forget to click subscribe down below if uh, you want to see more of these videos and I appreciate any feedback if there's something that um, you guys want to see me review and uh, see me, you know, um, look after. I'm going to try and get some more videos uh, uploaded uh, later with some shooting and um, different guns and things like that. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you guys next time.